Hey guys, Shanti Phillips here with my August 22nd DVD update. When I talk about the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so, let me let you know, guys, this is going to be a big update. There's a whole lot of stuff in this update. Stuff, too, that I really want to talk about, so I might talk about some of them a little longer than normal. Certain ones. Uh, so let's get right into this one. And I'm sorry if I may cough here and there. A bit of an allergy cough going on right now, so there may be some coughs. But the first one I got from Shaft Factory, Scream Factory line. This is from the director of Henry Porter for the Serial Killer. It's his new movie. Uh, his first new movie you know, feature in 15 years. He's done stuff for uh, Master of Horror and a couple other things in between, but this is his first actual feature. This was an absolutely outstanding movie. One of those movies, too, after I watched it. You know, every so often you watch a movie and you go, that was a really, really good movie. And you think about it for a while and you kind of keep thinking about it. And you also think about, I could watch this again immediately after. And the movie's Harvest. And there's not many movies like that where you, after you watch it, you know, where you go, oh, I could watch this again. Or you think about it a whole lot. Because there's some movies when you're watching, you're like, ah, I can't, I'm going to be done with this movie. Or, you know what I mean? You're like, it's that kind of thing. It's just nothing special. Or it's, you've kind of seen it a million times. This, on the other hand, was an outstanding movie that I really loved. You know, Michael Shannon was great in this, and Samantha Morton as the mother was amazing. It's basically, though, about this girl who ends up moving, you know, in with her grandparents. Uh, something happened to her family, and she's basically, you know, has no family left but her grandparents. She lives out here in this small area, the middle of nowhere in this farm area. And she starts kind of wandering around, and she discovers next door is this boy who's, you know, living there. This young kid who's all he was basically in bed the entire time, and his mother is this crazy woman who's like screaming at him the whole time, going, "You cannot go outside. You can't do this." She basically is not letting him do anything. She's saying, "You're sick. You know, you can't do anything to get better." Her father, you know, his father though is, you know, is a little different acting to him. He wants to talk. You know, he's talking to him about wanting to play ball with him, but the mother would never let him do anything. So basically, though, this girl ends up becoming friends with this kid. You know, and the mother finds out about this and is terribly, you know, really pissed off about it, doesn't want her around, finding ways to say, you know, he shouldn't be, she shouldn't be around here. You know, and that's basically what it is, is these, these two kids that become, you know, friends with each other. And the girl, you know, that she becomes friends with uh, starts to kind of discover things about this family and about things that are going on over there. And that's all I really want to say about it, because there was some really pretty cool twists and different stuffs, and you kind of find out what the harvest means and what the meaning of the movie was. But this was absolutely superb, amazing movie. I mean, to be totally honest, I cannot tell you the last time I watched a movie that I thought about this much and how the performance in this were great. And this is one of those movies that I feel like hardly anyone knows about, and I would highly, highly, highly recommend you guys pick this one up. This is one of those ones that I love so much. Uh, the next one... And there's been a couple, you know, of these bear movies recently. Uh, the Grizzly Rage one. This is from Scream Factory as well. That one was not great. Uh, if you want to watch a good, like, bear movie, you know, killer bear movie, it's actually based on a true story as well. And this actually takes it to a pretty extreme level with, like, the, the gore and things like that. Because it's not, like, the bear throughout the whole movie, but it's, like, the bear when it has the bear stuff. It's like, whoa. Like, totally, like, authentic levels. Like, really, like, shocking with like kind of creeps, yeah, it kind of has like the the feeling of Jaws, you know, the attack stuff in Jaws, like that ultra realistic. But the movie's called Back Country, and it's about a, a couple that are going out. Uh, you know, the husband basically, or the boyfriend basically, he wants to take her out there, and his plan is to propose for her to her out there, but. They go out there, and it's kind of them just sort of doing their trek out there. And the the ranger's like, well, you know, you got to stay up that one trail. It's very, you know, it's closed to the public. And he's, of course, he's not listening to it. Wanders out in the trail because he wants to go out there to propose to her. She doesn't know about this is happening. So it's about them, you know, hiking out there. And the one day when they're out there, they end up seeing running into this other guy out there in the middle of nowhere with them. And it kind of makes you think, is this guy going to be something going to be bad about this guy? You don't know. But of course, you know it's a killer bear movie. But of course, though, they keep going further out there. And the actor, though, um, was the guy who's in, like, Six Feet Under, you know, Eric uh, Bafleur, and he's doing this, like, kind of unique French accent in this. I always love that guy. You know, he's a really cool character actor. And he's in a bunch of different shows and things like that. But always like that guy. And he has, like, a small part in this, but he's really cool in this. But he ends up, they basically go out there, and of course, they get lost, and then wander out into the wrong area they shouldn't be in, get totally lost, don't know how they're going to get back, and they start fighting with each other, and then, of course, a bear shows up, and then it's basically what ends up happening. And it's, like I said, it takes it to an extreme level, but really, really cool, small movie, but really cool, great bear stuff as well. 
definitely check this out for if you want to see a cool, different, well-made Killer Bear movie. And like I said, this is like the best Killer Bear movie since The Edge I can think of. Uh, the next one, I haven't seen this movie in probably like 18 years. It's been years since I've seen this movie. I always remembered as a kid really liking this because um, Fisher Stevens was in this, and this is around the same time that he was in Sewer Murder Brothers movie and as a kid. You know, I know people always talk down about that. I would love for if, if Shot Factory released that one because I always loved that movie. But, you know, I always loved that movie as a kid. Still love it to this day. But I always liked this movie because Fisher Stevens from that. Fisher Stevens was also in uh, the Shirt Circuit films. And this is Hackers, which, I, like I said, I have not seen this movie in years. has a bunch of new features on here, too. You know, talking to Fisher Stevens, Matthew Lillard, Penn Jillette, who was in this movie, about the movie. But the movie's basically about uh, this one kid who's like a main, like a big hacker and going around and when he was a little kid he got in trouble for hacking all this stuff and leaking all this information. This movie's like even more effective today than it was then. The thing that's kind of cool about this movie too is it has that Mario Brothers vibe to it with the look. It's got these really ultra, you know, kind of like futuristic kind of styles in this movie. And the look to kind of like mix with Ninja Turtles, mix with Super Mario Brothers were kind of like the clothes. And it's not like just because it was the 90s. It's actually, they kind of stylized this to this kind of weird movie. So you kind of, it has no real year to it. You couldn't even place a year to this movie. But he basically, though, you know, this company is trying to pinpoint all the stuff on these group of these hackers, you know, Angela and Jolie is in this movie with these group of the hackers. They're trying to plant this thing on them that they're trying to do, and the hackers are trying to, you know, clear their name for it, and that's basically what it is. But a really cool movie, like I said, I can't believe how long it's been since I've seen this movie. Looks great on Blu-ray, and just a really, really fun movie about people hacking the world and hacking the planet. I like this one a lot more than I remember. Like I said, it's been such a long time since I watched it. Uh, same with this movie on this set. It's a double pack from Shot Factory as well. This is Roddy Dangerfield. This has uh, Easy Money and Men at Work. Easy Money is a great movie. Um, this is Roddy Dangerfield, and he's basically a um, guy who's always kind of drinking and gambling and you know saying all kinds of dirty words and things like that. And you know his mother-in-law that he's you know basically hates him for this and does not like the way he is. And she ends up recently dying, and it's in her will that if he can clean up his act and stop with you know drinking and smoking and doing drugs and lose weight and all these kind of things, then he will end up getting this huge fortune of money. So it's basically about him trying to change his ways and get himself together and so he can get and collect all this money. Men in Work though is Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez, you know as playing garbage men and then they end up you know seeing this person getting murdered and they are afraid that they're going to be you know you know charged with this so they have to try and figure out and solve the crime of who did it to try and clear their name or hopefully clear their name from it both really fun movies though easy money though is my ultimate favorite of these movies uh it's just a you know ryan dangerfield was so on his game then i loved him in everything though especially ladybugs was one of my favorites as a kid but this is a, just a great great movie uh, like I said, there's some really cool stuff in this update. It's one of the best updates in a long time. The next one has Metamorphosis and Beyond Darkness. This is a uh, double pack from um, Shout Factory as well. And this one, you know, Metamorphosis is a movie kind of like Reanimator about this doctor who's doing these experiments on himself and, you know, bad things start to happen to him. Beyond Darkness is about a family that moves into this house. They think it's a great house. And then, of course, it's like haunted and bad stuff starts to happen to them in the house. The reason I was really interested in seeing Beyond Darkness is it stars Michael Paul Stevenson, who, you know, was a kid from Troll 2. And he's a cool guy. I did a video with him a long time ago. You guys might remember at a cookout. He was like randomly in it. But he's always a cool guy. Guy. You know, he directed Best Worst Movie. You know, Shot Factory is going to be putting out Troll and Troll 2, which I can't wait for their edition of that. And it's going to come with, you know, a bonus disc of Best Worst Movie for people that haven't seen it. Uh, but the movie, though, is, you know, he's in this movie and it's directed by the director of Troll 2, Beyond Darkness. You know, this is right, I think he did it right after Troll 2. And it doesn't get talked about as much. Like, this is one I don't believe was ever released on DVD before. So it's really cool that it's finally out there. Just really fun, silly movies. Not as, you know, crazy silly as Troll 2. Troll 2 is like one of the best, because it is the best, worst movie. But I would check these out for sure if you want to see movies that I doubt you guys have probably seen. Uh, the next one from Shot Factory as well is Army of Frankensteins. And this is, um, this is a newer movie. 2004, and this is based uh, in 2014, but it's basically about this kid 
who ends up working in a supermarket and he ends up be, you know getting kidnapped by like an Igor type guy and they basically you know kidnap him to steal his eye to put into a Frankenstein by this crazy doctor who's trying to create an, like Frankensteins and when he's there this he ends up you know getting away from them and opening up this portal to another dimension and he ends up getting taken back in time to the Civil War times and he gets stuck there and then these all the Frankensteins that he created end up getting that the doctor created get cloned and all get in the Civil War so they kind of all get stuck there you know during the war and trying to figure out how they're going to get back and have to you know survive and kill off these Frankensteins it's just a fun silly movie uh, the next one from Warner Brothers, and I love this movie. You guys saw my review of this before, um, and this is, you know, Tom Hardy and Charlie Theron in Mad Max uh, Fury Road, and like to me, when I watched this movie, I, like I said this before, I didn't miss Mel Gibson at all. You know, Mel Gibson's fine, but this movie to me was better than all the other ones. Like, I, I loved, you know, Road Warrior, but something about this movie was so perfect and so works so well and it's one of those movies that really will live on as a movie you can watch again and again. I absolutely love this movie, but it's basically about uh, Mad Max's character who, you know, the, the kind of the you know, evil guy who has keeps all these women as kind of his sex slaves. The women kind of end up escaping why Mad Max has been taken in by them. And it's kind of them all trying to get away. And the whole movie is all set in cars, the entire movie, which is I mean, pretty much like 95% of it is in cars, but some really, really cool sequences, amazing, you know, practical effects, stuff that they did too in the cars. Uh, this is just one that if you guys haven't seen it or kind of have reservations about watching this, definitely watch this one. You know, like I said, it totally is as good, if not better, than Road Warrior. Uh, like I said, I absolutely love this movie. So cool. I, I love all the characters. I love this. Love Zoe Kravitz. Very, very cool movie. Has a bunch of features on here, too, about the making of the movie. Uh, the next one, I saw this one in theaters as well. This is from Paramount. This is Jack Black and James Marsden in the D Train. And this is another one that was so funny and has such a great soundtrack in it. And it's, um, it's basically about Jack Black, who is the head of a reunion of committee at his high school, and <clears throat> you know he's kind of been living in the same town, and people kind of walk all over him, and he's not totally happy. And his friends, they don't really, they're not really friends with him. They don't want to go with him. They, he asks them if they want to go out to dinner. They all go, oh no, we're all going to go home. He sees that they end up going to the bar without him and doing all this different stuff. So he comes with this idea, and one night he's at home, you know, watching TV and sees that James Marsden's character is in a commercial, and he was someone that he went to school with, and he gets this idea that if he can get him to come to the reunion, he's going to be the hero of the school, they're all going to go to this reunion, they're all going to look up to him, be so happy that he got him to come, and think of him as kind of the star. So he ends up going to Hollywood to try and convince him to go to the reunion, and basically he goes there and has these crazy nights with him, and something big happens. That at, at night with him and James Marsden, something that makes him, Jack Black, kind of think about everything about himself and kind of at the same time makes him not really sure that he wants James Marsden's character there anymore. Absolutely amazing, great movie. Um, and I'm not saying what happens. I don't want to ruin anything because you wouldn't expect what's going to happen to happen. But it is a great movie. And there's one, another one of those ones you guys have got to watch. It has on here a gag reel and deleted scenes. Uh, the next one from Paramount as well as Ethan Hawke. This is from the director, you know, Andrew Nikolai, who directed, you know, The Host, Gattaca, which is a great movie, you know, Gattaca, Simon, uh, you know, wrote The Truman Show, is a great writer. Um, and this is a little bit of a different movie for him because it's more of a, like, a not a science fiction. He did one other movie that was not, like, futuristic or science fiction or kind of otherworldly, like, even Truman Show is not totally, like, you know, it's like a different kind of movie. This is more of a serious movie I think Lord of War was one of his other ones that wasn't. But this stars Ethan Hawke and Zoe Kravitz is in this as well. And, um, you know, it's called Good Kill. This movie was okay, but it, it just, compared to his other movies and some of the other stuff that he's written, it's just not the same. It's, I don't really love as many war movies that much. But it's a different kind of thing, though, because it's about Ethan Hawke as a drone pilot, you know, living and doing it all in Nevada. But he kind of really wants to actually go and be active duty and because he's not so happy with his life and he doesn't really get along with his wife or he isn't really very happy with her and no one understands why he wants to go back and it's kind of the him there controlling these drones and then kind of wondering if this is the right thing and if he should continue to do this and if he can kind of support this war anymore that's pretty much what it is 
And that's you know, like I said, it's not a maze or anything like that. But if you guys are interested in it, it's not not like bad or anything, but just not totally as as cool as his other movies. The next one from Olive Films, and Olive Films 2 next month has some amazing stuff coming out as well. A whole bunch of shot on video horror films. Um, and, you know, Mannequin and Mannequin 2, you guys know how much I love those movies. So I can't wait, especially Mannequin 2. But this one is um, The Last American Virgin. And this has always been a favorite of mine. Um, you know, I, I put this thing on the back for some, because I, I wanted just to keep it. This old sticker from, was on the old DVD from, um, from Borders Books. Because, you know, Borders Books says no more. But this movie is basically, though, about the group of these these kids who are friends. And it's a really funny movie, though. They're friends. And it's kind of about them trying to get laid and things like that. And the one ends up meeting uh, the one uh, girl, you know, played by Diane Franklin, who was in um, Bill and Ted as the princess. And she was in uh, Terror Vision. Um, and he ends up meeting her and kind of starting to really like her, but then his other friends end up starting to date her. And it's kind of about him trying to get with her and set to, you know, really great 80s music. So this is from 1982. But it's about him, you know, trying to end up getting with her. And just to, and it also is one of those movies, too, that has such a sad aspect to the movie, too. Some really sad. It's not like a uplifting kind of movie. It's a more, way more, to me, true-to-life kind of movie. But such a great movie. Great, great music in this. And Olive Films and all these gave, you know, gave them a great transfer. Their transfers are always really top-notch. They're never like, nothing, anything about a weird blending or anything like that. Uh, the next one, and this one I had not watched in such a long time, and I forgot how funny this was. This is Student Bodies. This is like the original, earliest horror movie spoof that there ever was. Or one of the earliest ones. It's before Scary Movie, before all that. And it's uh, Student Bodies. And it's pretty much about this school, and, you know, there's a killer at the school killing people, and it's all done really comedic, silly over the top, and the killer is, like, breathing heavy. He's like, <gasps> like this, and then he's, like, uh, he's weird, talking through chickens and doing all these weird voices, like, oh, my God, I'm, gonna, I'm looking, I'm, I'm touching what mommy doesn't want me to. I feel, oh, I'm doing what I shouldn't be doing. I'm having bad thoughts. It's, like, it's really ridiculous stuff. He's spying on them in the locker rooms, these crazy things, and the kills, they always put up, like, a kill count, and he kills them with, you know, trash bags, and it's kind of the, the school is trying to figure out who it is, and they're trying to blame this one girl, and and the, the one teacher is obsessed with horse head bookends. It is such a such a ridiculous, fun movie. It's one of those movies, like, I, 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 don't, I cannot think of the last time why I laughed so much at anything, and how effective this is, and how it works better even today, and holds up so good. Like, I, I miss these kind of movies. And it's not even really dirty or anything like that. It's like, more like PG is kind of humor, but it's just so funny. Uh, it's kind of in the, in the vein of like the David Zucker movies. Uh, the next one is at least a Silverstone movie. And this is not the movie that was kind of a similar idea that was like, sort of, but it was more her obsessing. Uh, the Crush. And this one is called The Babysitter. And I think I saw this one years back. This is from Olive Films as well. And this is basically about uh, Lisa Silverstone as his babysitter and three different people who are all obsessed with her. The um, kind of, and it's kind of them thinking about their fantasies with her and thinking the one guy is like the the dad of the kid that she's babysitting. He's having these thoughts about going in there and sleeping with her and you know leaving his wife and things like that. The other guy was one of the old boyfriends, and then these two end up meeting together and they're kind of talking about her and. They're like planning to go and see her, but it's basically though just about obsession, about a character's total obsession with her character. Why it's all set during one night with her babysitting the you know the kids, and you know it's it's actually a pretty cool movie. It's a different kind of movie though, because it's like I said, it's you know, stars Jeremy London, uh, J T Walsh, who was a great actor, who's in uh, Pleasantville, and uh, I always think of him too from Sling Blade. But this was a pretty cool one, and kind of one I feel like isn't talked about as much as compared to like The Crush. Uh, the next one is another one I had never seen before, and it's called The Sender. This is from Olive Films as well, and this is basically about this guy. This, the beginning of the movie is the coolest part, because this guy goes to a public park, starts picking up rocks, and then walking into the lake to drown himself, and then he ends up getting committed to the nuthouse. 
it turns out this guy has got some kind of ability to make people think of his fears and things like that. So he's in the nut house making this doctor see his fears and you know once you meet this guy you become like obsessed with him and you can't sleep you wake up and have these terrible nightmares he makes you see things so you open a refrigerator you see all these kind of worms and all these kind of crazy things um and you know you see she starts seeing visions of like the mother of this kid coming and you're kind of wondering what is real or what isn't and things like that and there's these great sequences too when he's being like you know shock treatment when you know, and they do the shock treatment, then the other doctors start like flying up in the air. There's crazy sequences in this movie. Very, very cool, weird one. Like that, I feel like a lot, a lot of people have seen this. Uh, the next one from um, from you know Arrow Video is the uh, the Grand Buffet. Or bu buffet. You know, every time I think of you know, because my grandmother was French and she always was like Buffet. So I always like this is one of those movies. You know, it was always kind of referenced when you people were talking about eating a lot. You know, they're going to the buffet and like, you know, because this movie is basically about a bunch of these guys, you know, all these different guys who plan to get together, you know, and basically just eat themselves to death. And it's that's basically what the movie is. Them all coming together at this, you know, villa and, you know, ordering all this food and like gorging on the food and then getting sick and clogging up the toilets in the house and bringing in prostitutes, sleeping with women, getting like, to and like dying off one by one by eating themselves to death. And that's what the movie is. It has on here, though, a new 2K transfer on the movie, you know, some behind the scenes footage and a bunch of interviews as well. But it's a really, really cool, weird, weird, weird movie. Um, I would definitely recommend it if you want to see a really strange movie. And one of those movies, too, like I said, when it comes to buffets, you probably have heard this referenced in your life before, not knowing what it was. And this is the movie that they're talking about. And the next one from Arrow UK, he sent me this to take, you know, to show you guys. And this is a, you know, region. B copy, and this is, you know, Videodrome, David Cronenberg's Videodrome, I'll show you guys inside, there's a couple things I can't show on it just because of the, um, you know, the stuff on it, but this has on here the, you know, new uncut trans for the movie, and here, a uh, disc with, you know, this is on DVD and Blu-ray in here, of um, a bunch of, you know, David Cronenberg's early films, um, and here's a little look though inside, you know, here's the case is very cool set. I believe this one has sold out as well, they were telling me. Um, and then here's the, you know, Videodrome and the early works discs. I do have a region, uh, two DVD player that I can watch them in as well though, but it doesn't really work too well. Down the line, I'm going to definitely have to get a region B player. I might just get an actual B player. I think I, there's a way to make that work because I would like to actually be able to look through some of these things. But, you know, a booklet about the movie. It's a 100-page booklet. But as I remember, I have not seen this movie in years. But as I remember, a very, very cool movie from him. And as a, like I said, it's a limited edition set. I don't know how many copies of this were made, though. The other one, too, from them is My Darling Clementine, which is a Jane Fonda film. And here's a look look at, at the thing. And this is this is from their line Arrow Academy, which is like older kind of classic films. And here's a little look inside at it. There's also a booklet, you know, about the movie, some pictures and things like that. And here's the disc. Also has reversible cover art as well for the movie. Here's a look at that. But the next one, and this is one that somehow I had never seen before. And I'd always heard of this one. This is it from the Warner Archive. So a lot of people have asked me about the Warner Archive. You can get them on Amazon, but the main place is on the Warner Archive website. These are not sold in stores. These are also uh, the discs, the DVDs are burn on demand. The Blu-rays, though, are actual press discs, though, because people always ask about that if they're, you know, the burnt disc or you know, they're actually the press discs. I'm hoping, you know, if Warner Archive watches this, they put out nothing but trouble. And that would be a great one for Blu-ray because I feel like it's one of these ones that would fit in the category of not ones that would need a big release, but just, you know, the people who really want it will get it. But this is a movie called um, The Hunger, which is another one of those movies that after I watched it, I really wanted to watch it again. <coughs> There's the coughing. The movie, though, stars, um, you know, David Bowie and Susan Sarandon, but it's basically about this woman who is a, you know, a vampire and, um, she kind of goes through different people who are kind of like her lovers that she kind of turns in their vampires and stay with her. And David Bowie has, you know, been with her for years. And she, they kind of, after a while, all of a sudden start to kind of age. And then like within like a day die. And they like age. And like, so there's these great footage of him getting really, really old, like sitting in the, you know, he goes to see Susan's random to kind of talk about to her about, <coughs> you know, a clinic to talk about, 
aging and things like that. She thinks that he's nuts and doesn't want to talk to him. But then later in the day, she sees you know David Bowie's character who's become an old man. She doesn't know what happened. She starts to follow him. That night, David Bowie's character dies. And then uh, the vampire woman ends up wanting to be with Susan Sarandon's character and kind of puts her under a spell and hopes that she'll you know, start to be with her and become take over for David Bowie's character. But this movie has, is so ahead of its time with the music and the look and everything. It, it holds up so well. And it's such a cool, you know, stylized movie. Tony Scott directed this movie. But definitely watch this movie if you guys haven't seen this. It's a very cool, definitely up there is my favorite vampire movie next to, I've said it next to Lost Boys and um, Near Dark. Or some of my, you know, top three favorite ones. Now the next one is another Warner Archive title. And this is um, The World According to Garp. And this is a um, Ron Williams movie. This is the first feature that he did after Popeye, but his first like dramatic film. This is before he started doing drama and things like that. So he, this was kind of new to him at this time. Um, this is you know uh, John Irvine, you know based on the book by John Irvine. And this is basically about the life of Garp, and it's you know pretty much shows um, you know him when he was a kid, you know with his mother, and his mother is basically slept with this guy who was dying in the hospital because she to get pregnant because she's never really interested in being with anybody or having anybody. She kind of doesn't want anything like that. She just wanted to have a kid and that's how Garp came along. And it's kind of about his life and um, you know when he him getting a girlfriend and him getting married and his, everything going on and his mother wants to be a writer and, and she kind of becomes very famous for being a feminist writer and this is very early on at this time I think it was said like the 60s or way before that was a big thing so she became very famous for that Garp you know was actually writing kind of non-fiction kind of things and that's essentially what it is is just his life and just a really really well made very layered movie really really good one of those movies too I've always really loved this John Lithgow is so good in this movie definitely one of my favorite John Lithgow movies next to Harry and the Hendersons the next one from Anchor Bay is one of Ron Williams' last films, or last live action films. There was one more that's still to come out, which is an animated film, and this is called Boulevard. But it's a very, very sad movie. This is from Anchor Bay, but very, very sad, but a really, really great performance from him in this. And it's basically about a guy who, you know, is married, been with his wife for years, and, you know, basically is kind of his whole life hidden the fact and never went, really came out about the fact that he was gay. And he ends up one night, end up, you know, meeting this male prostitute that he becomes friends with. He's not sleeping with the guy, but he's just kind of talking to him and kind of trying to talk out his life and, you know, sort of starts to fall in love with this guy. And it's sort of about him as if he, if he, he you know, Ron Williams' his character is going to, you know, ch you know, change his whole life and, you know, get away from, from his wife and, and what he's going to do because he's kind of stuck at this, this one job and the guy is kind of wants him to go further with his job and, you know, become the manager of the branch and he doesn't really want to do this. And it's pretty much just about what his life and this guy kind of coming to terms with things and finally starting to admit it to himself and not have to hide anymore. It's just a really, really good movie, but very, very sad movie, though. Like I said, though, it's just because he plays it so sad in this movie, it's just, it's just the way he's going around and things like that. But I would definitely recommend you guys watch this. But like I said, just go into this knowing it's a very, very downbeat movie. You, it's not a movie you're going to feel too positive afterwards. Um, the next one was a great cover on this, and this is Lost After Dark. There's a lot of these movies, too, that are kind of set to be, you know, themed like the 80s, and this is actually set in 1984, and they do an okay job. This one did a really, really good job in this. This stars, though, um, you know, Robert Patrick, you know, is in this movie, is the teacher that comes after the students. It's about a group of these students on prom night that end up, you know, kind of leaving the prom and, you know, hijacking a school bus and kind of driving the school bus. Of course, that they end up breaking down the middle of the road, end up stumbling upon this old haunted house where this crazy cannibal killer is in it. And it's basically them there getting killed off one by one by this killer. And there's some really great, ultra-violent, gory deaths in this movie. You know, and some really fun throwback kind of scenes in this. All practical effects, no CGI or anything like that. But this is just a really, really cool, fun throwback movie. And it was very effective. And, like, they did, you know, a really good job aging it to look like it was, you know, shot in the 80s. The clothes, everything was really, really well done. Um, I don't know, I really like this movie. This is a really fun movie. I feel like another one that not a lot of people have probably heard of, but definitely watch this one. Really cool throwback. 
The next one, I actually saw this one in theaters as well. Um, and this is, you know, Where Hope Grows. And this, you know, a bunch of different people on this, but the one, you know, who played, you know, Deanna, Danica McKellar, you know, from, uh, you know, Wonder Years in this movie. And the one guy in this was the guy who played a bully in a lot, like all like the 80s movies. And he was in, like, Just One of the Guys, um, you know, The Karate Kid, and a bunch of movies. And this is about a guy who's an old, um, you know, bat baseball player who kind of his life has kind of gone into shambles. He's having problems with his daughter. Um, he's, you know, drinking and just having a really hard time in his life. And he doesn't know what he's going to do. And, you know, he's, things, opportunities are all getting screwed up. And he ends up meeting this guy, you know, who works in a market who's a, you know, a guy who has um, Down syndrome. And he kind of becomes friends with this guy and kind of helps him. And this guy is kind of helping him sort of, in a way, get his life together. It's one of those really good feel-good movies. You know, it's a Christian movie, but... I, I, I sometimes like these kind of movies. I'm not like a religious person or anything like that, but I like these kind of positive movies sometimes. And, and this was a really, really well-made movie. And the guy who plays Produce uh, has a really, really good job in this. And hopefully he gets to do more movies because I thought he was really good in this, really good performance in this movie and some sad stuff as well. Um, but I really I really like this one. It, was, um, it has on here deleted scenes and a bunch of featurettes and commentary as well on the movie. Uh, the next one from um, Art Exploitation Films. This is one that I've really wanted to see. Heard a lot of people talk about this. Saw this, you know, the cover of Rue Morgue. This is a movie called Cub, and it's about, um, you know, great cover on this. And a lot of people ask too. This is from Art Exploitation, and this is a burnt, di not a burnt disc. This is an actual press disc because there's always kind of talk with some of their old releases being, you know, burnt disc. This is actually a press disc. Just so people were wondering, but this is. Um, basically about these kids that go out to a Cub Scout meet and the one kid ends up out there. It's basically focused on this one kid. When he's out there, they, there's this weird kind of kid dressed in this mask kind of stalking the Cubs and the one kid there kind of sees him around and he's going around killing people out there and, you know, killing this, killing animals and all this kind of stuff. He's like a guy living out in the land out there, this little kid. And it's pretty much that's what it is. And there's some really great sequences in this. And there's a feature out on here, too, showing the special effects. And I had, you know, like, they did a good job. It's like, you know, they did stuff with the trees falling down and certain things, like filling in gaps that you never would have thought was actually done later because it just sort of seemed like it was all there. But this is one of those movies that is, like, really works and it's a really cool movie. There's not many movies, too, where it's like kids, killer kids, and these kind of movies. They don't make those kind of movies very often. And this was a very, very cool movie. Uh, has on here a short film and a music video and deleted scenes as well. But just a great movie about the kid out there getting killed off by this guy and the, you know, this little kid in this mask and kind of discovering the meaning of why he's out there. And there's some really great settings and stuff like that. It kind of has a vibe of like the new Hills Have Eyes mixed with Friday the 13th. And I always love, like, camping movies, you know, like, really cool camping movies. And this was a great camping movie. And they sent me, too, a little patch, too, which is pretty cool. Uh, the next one from Twilight Time is Summer Lovers. I put the insert inside so no one says, oh, is there showing too much? Because it's just the backs, but, you know, on the Internet it may look like it's more or something to it. But this one is, um, you know, Summer Lovers. This is a limited edition from Twilight Time, you know, from Screen Archives. Uh, limited of 3,000 units. This is a movie, too, that I had never seen. This is from Randor Kleischer, who directed, you know, a couple of years before he did um, The Blue Lagoon. Then he went on to do, um, you know, uh, Big Top Pee Wee, a bunch of different stuff. And this stars uh, Daryl Hannah, one of her earliest movies. She did that horror movie as well, though, that Scream Factory put out the camping one before this, though. This is right, right after that. And this is Summer Lovers, and it's basically about this couple that end up going out to the Greek Isles. They actually filmed this in one of the islands where they filmed, um, you know, Island of Death. And I was watching this thinking, is that the same place? And I looked it up and it was the same exact island. Uh, really, really cool 80s music in this, especially the opening music song. Some great montages and great scenes in the Greek Isles. And this is one of those movies, too. There was like, man, there was a lot of nudity. It was like, because like, they were all on the nude beaches and stuff like that. Like, I don't know if it's the same like that now, but it sort of seemed like if you go to, like, Greece and all these areas, there's, like, nudity everywhere you walk. It just sort of seems like that's just what it is there. But um, it's basically, though, a couple that ends up going there, um, and then the, the boyfriend ends up basically becoming obsessed with this one woman there who's a tourist as well, and he ends up sleeping with her, and then it's kind of about them all sort of 
kind of sleeping together and like going around island to island and just sort of exploring the Greece islands and things like that. It's a cool movie though. It really is really cool music in this one as well. And has on here isolated music, the making of Summer Lovers, uh, screen tests and the trailers. Uh, the next one from Sony is Extinction and this stars Matthew Fox. And this is a kind of end of the world zombie movie. A little bit different though. It's like at the beginning of the movie you see these characters getting uh, attacked by zombies in this bus. And it's like, I think it's like 10 years later. So, yeah, nine years later. You know, the kid, in the beginning though, the kid is a, like a baby. And, um, you know, it's nine years later and everyone is pretty much gone. You just see the uh, the father and the, the daughter and the father and then like the neighbor who's there and they have some kind of beef with each other. You don't exactly know what it is. You start to find out a little throughout the movie what's going on between them. But um, they're kind of there. They believe that these zombies are gone. Um, <clears throat> the daughter doesn't really get to go out. Kind of always in the house. The, the father's out every so often bringing in more food and supplies. All of a sudden though, this zombie is discovered. There's like a, this zombie and they're wondering what is going on. Are these zombies back? The, you know, the neighbors that are there. You know, you have to kind of end up working together to try and fight these zombies. It's a pretty cool movie. Um, not amazing or anything like that, but a little bit different. Some cool settings. It was all set in the snow, too. <coughs> so I thought it was pretty cool, though. As on here, eight featurette, you know, eight behind-the-scenes featurettes on the movie. Uh, the next one from Image is um, Run, Hide, Die. And this is about a group of these friends who end up going out, a bunch of girls who end up going out to... Um, you know, a cabin out in the middle of the woods, area out in the middle of the woods, to, um, because something ended up happening to one of their friends, boyfriend, they're all kind of going out there to try and cheer up and things like that. They go out there, and of course, though, there's somebody out there hunting them down and killing them. And there were some cool aspects of this as well, because the one girl was an actress, kind of like, talking about, like, can you help me read through my scripts? And it's this terrible script, and... It's just, I don't know, because I like some, you know, some actors as well, so I always like something that had, like, deals with acting and that kind of stuff, talking about making, you know, cheesy horror movies and stuff like that, because she's making this bad horror movie. So she's out there, and they're all getting killed off one by one. You kind of start to discover things about them and stuff like that. But a pretty cool movie, though. Uh, the next one, this is going to be an exclusive on Blu-ray, the Best Buy. The DVD is going to be everywhere, but the Best Buy, the Blu-ray is only going to be in Best Buy. This is um, Dark Was Night, and this is about... Basically about a town where, you know, something is going, starting to kill people in the town. And uh, that Kevin Durant's character uh, is basically trying to figure out what it is. Because he's kind of starting to see, like, these footprints and these tracks everywhere. And he's kind of trying to pinpoint what is going on, what is killing the people in this town. They're kind of, like, believing the town has kind of a, re a legend about this creature. But they're kind of not believing it. But, of course, it's starting to seem like it might actually be a reality. It's kind of just him going and trying to figure out you know, what is killing these people in this town and trying to put the pieces together. You know, Lucas Huss is in this movie as well. Has on here behind the scenes and a Q&A with um, the cast of the movie. Most pretty cool, you know, creature movie. Some pretty cool sequences in this. Um, really cool cover on this one as well. Uh, the next one, I just finished watching this. This is from PBS. This is uh, Walt Disney. Uh, he Made Me Believe, an American Experience. It's a new documentary. I think it was 2000, I think it's brand new. And it's um, basically about Walt Disney's life, uh, you know, in the beginning through how he created Disneyland. <clears throat> my favorite was the Disneyland stuff. That was my favorite stuff on here because they kind of cut together because I'd seen a lot of the footage before, but like on those weird, you know, those old rare tin dishes, disc sets that Disney put out years back that are so expensive now. But it shows like when he's like the, how the park was built, the opening day, and then the kind of the bloopers about all the issues of the park. But if you're interested in Disney, you know me, I'm always going to Disneyland all the time. Um, you know, really love the theme park, and I would definitely recommend this, especially too for the Disneyland stuff. So some really cool footage of the opening day. Uh, the next one from Alchemy is Checkmate, and this is you know stars Vinnie Jones and Danny Glover, uh, Misha Barton is in this movie. A bunch of different people in this movie, and this is a you know a little bit confusing to explain though. But it starts off at the beginning of this movie with a bank heist. Uh, you see like all the characters in this bank heist and, you know, Sean Ass is in this movie as like a priest and you're kind of like with a gun, you're kind of wondering what is he doing with this gun? And it kind of flashes back to the characters and kind of showing them what led up to them being at the, um, you know, the, the, all at the, you know, at the robbery. 
And there's like these two like kind of guys that are stealing from the thing. And the one guy's rolling over the top and doing this crazy weird laugh and stuff like that. It's a pretty cool movie though. It's, like I said, it's basically though just these characters that are all like coming together and like at this. And then you also kind of find out like certain things about why Sean Ashton has the gun and one guy's really sick and he needs to find a way to you know his daughter's really sick but he needs to you know be dead for them to collect the thing it needs to look like an accident you kind of dis like discover what everything means but it was actually pretty cool though uh the next one is Ex Exeter I believe that's how you say this this is from Marcus N Nispel you know who directed the um Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake um you know the, the remake of Friday the 13th and this is basically about a group of these friends they go to like an asylum, you know, the, you know, not yet, yeah, it's an old asylum that a church is cleaning up. And the one guy's working with the priest to kind of clean the place up. And the friends all kind of get together there. And of course they mess around with, you know, p you know, trying to summon demons and things like that. And, and this one kid that's in the, in the building that they kind of let there just hang out, like gets, ends up getting possessed. And he's like going real crazy. And of course though, he starts attacking the people. They start dying. And then they, you know, get trapped in this place. And they have to figure out how they're going to get out of there. It was a pretty cool movie. It's one of the first movies, the, one of the few movies that Marcus Nispel did that was not a remake or, you know, it's a totally new movie. I think it might have had another title as well. As, but it was pretty cool, though. Not as cool as some of his other stuff. It was a bit of a smaller movie, though. But it was, I did like it, though. The next one from E1. This is a really silly, fun movie called Avalanche Sharks. And I don't know if this was for sci-fi or not. I'm not sure if this aired on sci-fi. Or not, but it's called Avalanche Sharks. It's basically about this, you know, this this uh, ski lodge where something ends up happening and this avalanche goes off and sharks all come out of it. And it's about a group of friends going to this, um, you know, kind of spring break hangout at the ski lodge. And of course, one by one, they start disappearing and dying and vanishing from the park and they don't know what's going on. Of course, they're getting killed off by the sharks. And there's some really silly sequences of the shark coming out of the ground, killing them. I always love these kind of silly, ridiculous, you know, killer shark movies. That's what it really is. But, you know, you know what these kind of movies are, like silly, weird effects and stuff like that. That's kind of like the charm of these movies. And I think this movie, too, kind of knew that and really, like, went over the top with that kind of stuff to try and make it as silly as possible. But it is a really, really fun, weird killer shark movie. The next one I wanted to mention, because I filmed a cameo on this one a long time ago, playing a preacher. It's finally out, and this is from Whacked Movies. This is um, Adam the Amazing Zombie Killer. And this is basically about this guy who's a bowler, and zombies comedy is kind of about him going and killing off the zombies. But like I said, I'm in this playing like a TV preacher in this movie. And I always liked what I did, and it was kind of cool, like, different kind of thing for me. I, got, I was kind of basing the preacher off of, you know, um, Wolfman Jack and Motel Hell a little bit. But um, this has on here a documentary and a bunch of featurettes and trailers and things like that for the movie. Lloyd Kaufman's in this movie. My friend Babette Baum shows in this movie. It's a really fun movie. And the last one from, um, you know, INT Distribution is Purgatorium. And it's basically about a group of these people that end up waking up in this house. And <clears throat> they're kind of wondering how they got there. You know, you know it's purgat Purgatory. And they're kind of there trying to figure out what's going on. And they start kind of seeing people and seeing, like, ghosts and stuff like that. It's about them just trying to kind of put together the pieces to how they got there and if they're able to get out of here and trying to figure it out and trying to sort of survive the night. It was a, it was a pretty cool movie. Nothing absolutely outstanding or anything like that. Um, had some pretty cool, like, some, some cool sequences and stuff in this one, though. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this update. Like I said, it was a big update. Thanks again, guys, for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.